Well, God bless you, God bless you, and God bless you. Reverend Eddie here again. And this is Welcome to Deliverance. Chapter 5. Huh? Yeah, Lesson 5, as it were. Yes. Uh, we're going to be going to Jeremiah, chapter 18, for those of you that have your Bibles. And <clears throat> this is about the potter and the clay. And very big part of deliverance is realizing that we are the clay and God is the potter. We want him to shape us, to form us to make us, to change us into what He wants us to be. Not my will, but your will be done. It's where our hearts want to be in deliverance. You see, this is how you get delivered. Amen? Allowing the Lord to have His way in our lives. He'll take out the things that cannot serve Him. And He'll put the things in us that will please him, and that we will need to do his work, his will, and his way. Amen? All right. So, Jeremiah 18, I'm reading out of the New Living Translation. Verse 1, the Lord gave another message to Jeremiah. He said, go down to the potter's house, and I will speak to you there. So, I did as he told me, and found the potter working at his wheel. But the jar he was making did not turn out as he had hoped. So he crushed it into a lump of clay again and started over. Let me read that again. But the jar he was making did not turn out as he had hoped. So he crushed it into a lump of clay again and started over. That's the prerogative of the potter. And that's the prerogative of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Through the work of the Holy Spirit, through the process of sanctification, the Holy Spirit works in us, and it changes us, and it forms us, and it molds us, and it makes us, and shapes us into what He wants us to be. We don't tell God how we want to do it. God tells us how He going to do it. Amen? He is the creator, and we are the creation. Amen? So one of the biggest parts of deliverance, especially when you can't find deliverance ministries, and you're trying to do this on your own, one of the biggest parts of deliverance that will make deliverance a lot faster in your life let you achieve the goals that you're trying to achieve. Get where God is trying to take you. One way to get there much faster is to surrender. Completely surrender and know that God knows better than you do what you need. Know in your heart that where God is taking you is a whole lot better than any place you've ever been before. Amen? <clears throat> Verse 5, Then the Lord gave me this message. O oh, Israel, can I not do to you as the potter, as this potter has done to his clay? As the clay in the potter's hand, I'm sorry, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so you are in my hand. If I announce that a certain nation or kingdom is to be uprooted, torn down, and destroyed, but then that nation renounces its evil ways, I will not destroy it. As planned. So see, God can change his mind. Amen. And if I announce that I will plant and build up a certain nation or kingdom, but then that nation turns to evil and refuses to obey me, I will not bless it as I said I would. So there you go. Back in lesson four, we were talking about obedience. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Greater than sacrifice. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm a tither. I believe in giving. I believe in offerings and tithes. And I know that God blesses our giving. Don't get me wrong. I could not survive if it were not for my tithe. Because 
God honors my tithing. God makes a way for me every month. I get miracles, financial miracles, every month just to make it. So, I'm not saying that God doesn't want to bless us or that he doesn't want to give unto us or honor our giving. Don't ever think that. But understand this. More important than what we can receive from God is our obedience to God and what we can give God from our life. He gave us life. He gave us Jesus. What are you going to do with it? Amen. Watch this now. So the Lord says, uh, we're going to go back to uh, verse, <clears throat> we stopped in 10, and we're going to 11. Therefore, Jeremiah, go and warn all of Judah and Jerusalem. Say to them, this is what the Lord says. I am planning disaster for you instead of good. So turn from your evil ways, each of you, and do what is right. God is giving them a chance to repent, just like God gives us a chance to repent. Down this road to deliverance, we're not perfect. We're going to make mistakes along the way. But as long as we're quick to repent, you see, and stay focused on the Lord Jesus and allow him to make the changes in our life that we need to better us, you see, then we remain in God's will and we will receive uh, everything, every good plan that the Lord has for us. All right? Verse 12, but the people replied, don't waste your breath. We will continue to live as we want to, stubbornly following our own evil desires. Listen to the people of yesterday. And listen to the people today. They're going to do it their way. Huh. I think it was a science fiction movie where the little green Martian said to the earthling, resistance is futile. <laughs> it's the same way with the Lord. The more you resist, the longer deliverance takes. The quicker you surrender, and the more eager you are to work with God toward your deliverance, the best it can come. Amen? <clears throat> Verse 13, so this is what the Lord says. Has anyone ever heard of such a thing? Even among the pagan nations. This is God's chosen people. You're chosen. You see? So for you to uh, be stubborn with God, to uh, rebuke the teachings of the Lord, to turn against what God wants you to do, to do your own will, he said, has anyone ever heard of such a thing? He said, my virgin daughter Israel has done something terrible. Does the, does the snow ever disappear from the mountaintops of Lebanon? Do the cold streams flowing from those distant mountains ever run dry? But my people are not so reliable, for they have deserted me. God was providing for them. He was doing for them. And yet, they're taking it all for granted. We shouldn't take a moment of our lives for granted. I've been in hell. And the Lord was gracious enough to bring me out. I'm not going back. I'm going to do it, God. Amen. He says, but my people are not so reliable, for they have deserted me. They burn incense to worthless items. They have stumbled off the ancient highways and walk in muddy paths. Therefore, their land will become desolate, a monument to their stupidity. Let's not be stupid with God. Okay? He is all known. He is all seen. Okay? Our wisest man on earth, what he knows is foolishness to God. Who among men can counsel God? Come on now. Let's keep this thing real. Amen? All who pass by will be astonished and will shake their heads in amazement. I will scatter my people before their enemies as the east wind scatters dust. And in all their trouble, I will turn my back on them and refuse to notice their distress. Amen? You want to live a life of sin? You go right ahead. Me, Reverend Annie, I'm not going to join you. I don't care what the church does. If it's going down the wrong path, I'll get out of that church. I'm not found. I've been to hell. The Lord was gracious enough to pull me out. 
and I am on fire for him, and I am refuse. I refuse to compromise this one. I'm not going back. Sorry. Amen? So, let me take a few minutes. Now, anyone who knows me, and as you're getting to know me, you realize that I teach by the Word of God. That's how I teach. I bring the Word of God. Okay? Because in the Word is power. In the Word is truth. In the Word is life. Now, I can sit up here and call myself a minister and just preach what uh, uh, my words. But where's the power in my words? Amen? Ain't no power in my words unless the Lord anoints me. The power is in the Word of God. And I want you to receive this power. Amen? However, this time, I just want to break it down. Okay? Everything I'm giving you is Scripture. What I'm sharing with you is the truth. I have no reason to lie for you. Liars are going to end up in hell, and I ain't going back. So, nothing to gain from me lying to you. Amen? I'm not presenting religious points of view because I don't belong to any religion. I am non-denomination. So I'm not pushing any religious uh, uh, doctrines your way. I'm going to give it to you the way God gave it to me. I'm going to give it to you as I've learned to experience uh, walking this walk. I'm going to give it to you the way God's Word says it is. Amen? Alright, so... What I want to share with you is, uh, I, I'm sure the question may be arising, how do I start this deliverance process? How do I get delivered? It's fine that, that you're bringing me the word. It's fine that you're telling me that you got deliverance in this area, that area, and that area. But how do I, how do I get my deliverance? And the, the word of God, it's where you want to start. You want to start putting this Word of God into you like you never put it in before. Okay? Now, I came out of hell eight years ago, and I'm still pouring this Word into my spirit. You've got to build your spirit. You see? If you don't know the Word, how can you become it? How can you become something you don't know? You've got to read this Word in the morning when you wake up. Start your day with it. Amen? And you got to read this word before you go to bed. I'm reading the word during the day and I'm sharing it with you. The more word that you can get in you, the faster you will receive your deliverance. Amen? You will not get your deliverance without this word. So don't even think you can go down that path. You need the, you need the word. This is where the truth is. This is where the power is. This is where the life is. And there is deliverance in the Word of God. You want deliverance? Pour this Word into your life. Pour it into your spirit like never before. Go after it like it's candy. Because it sure is sweet. Amen? Alright. It takes serenity. Serenity these areas of your life. If you're hanging on... <laughs> to a particular thing in your life that's unpleasing to God, you need to ask yourself why. If it's displeasing God, we just read it, Jeremiah, you know, so be strong. You're headed toward destruction. We want to be headed toward heaven, eternal life with Christ. Okay? So we need deliverance. I know it's not being preached, it's not being taught, but that doesn't change the fact that we need it. Amen? Your focus must change. Your focus has to turn from yourself and toward Jesus. Amen? From yourself. There is no self-help. You can't help yourself. The answer is not in you. The answer is in Christ. So you've got to change your focus. Why me? Why me? Why me? I don't have. I need. I need. No. Forget all that. Okay? You start looking at Jesus, and he'll start working out those things in your life that need to be worked out. You give it all to Jesus and keep your eye on Jesus, okay? He'll make everything happen for you. Look at Peter. He took his eye off of Jesus, and he sunk in the water. But one word, one word from the Lord, Peter walked on water, changed his life forever. 
And one word from the Lord for you will change your life forever. Huh. I went to hell. My life certainly changed forever. Okay? We must change our focus and put our focus on Jesus. I'll end with this. There was a little boy. And in tears, he hit his knees. And he looked toward heaven. And he said, Lord Jesus, I've got a problem. It's me. <laughs> Jesus peeled back the clouds as he looked down on this little boy from heaven. And he smiled. And he said, I know. I've got the answer. It's me. Amen. I pray that this blessed you. Look forward to deliverance. Number six is coming soon. God bless you. God keep you. Keep you. May the Lord keep his mighty hand upon you and keep you safe. Thank you for coming. Bye-bye.